Hello, aloha everybody. Thank you, Doris. Thank you so much for your beautiful sharing. I did come in toward the end there and um, caught the end of it and always love your beautiful, beautiful direction that you offer. A gentle, gentle, hmm, pull. <laughs> that gentleness, is, I, I love it. Um, I'm not sure if I was supposed to pick up the mic there, Dove. <laughs> Let me know if you um, if you would like the mic. Aloha. Hi, Dove. Aloha to everybody in the room. And it's lovely to be here again. Always look forward to uh, coming on to radio. Hi, Jim. Greetings. Um, I always look forward to coming on to Radio Gather and sharing here. It's so um, filling, <laughs> I find, so fulfilling uh, to, um, it's like filling up the cup and, and turning to love and, and, and sharing this hour with love directly and coming together, joining uh uh, as you know, we, we learn on our journey that we're either focusing, we have two directions to turn, we're either focusing and turning toward love or we're turning toward the dream. We're turning one way or the other. And for this hour, um, I really see that when I come on radio gather for this hour, we're, we're all turning toward love and we're um, directing our attention toward love and as I just heard beautiful Doris <laughs> directing us towards love, our attention, so gently. And um, that's what this whole journey is about. Which way are we choosing? Are we choosing to face God or face love? Or are we choosing to face the confusion and the self that we've never really quite understood and, the, um, and everything that comes with it? So what's our choice? And there's a line here that I've read in the course um, that really hits home to me. You know, I, I'm going to read this sentence. Never forget that the sonship is your salvation, for the sonship is your soul. You know, um, prior to learning A Course in Miracles, I would look at um, many religious... <laughs> types of words, inclusive of Holy Spirit, um, were all kind of a little different, a little kind of strange to me because it wasn't, I didn't have a strong religious upbringing. Um, so, but, you know, growing up and, and, you know, we all hear, and it seems such a gentle word is the word soul. It's so gentle and, and it's something that many of us can relate to, that we have a soul. We know when, when we hear that, you know, we have a soul, the soul is shining, you know, we know that that's a loving place. We, we all know that in our hearts. That's a loving place is where the soul is. And, you know, when, when we hear the sentence like that, never forget that the sonship is your salvation, for the sonship is your soul. That really brings it right home. That's where we've got it going, you know, to the soul within. That's where all the answers are. You know, when we turn to face love, we're really turning to the soul within, returning to our spirit within, which, you know, our true self. We're turning to our true self and we're asking our true self to take over, to now um, light up the path, to, to give us direction, to show us the way. As soon as we turn to love, we're realizing that we, that, that we don't know. We stand in that direction. We feel that in our minds. We feel that in our hearts that that when we turn to love, it's all encompassing, it's all, it's all open, it's all, um, you know, for, for when we've been sleeping in this um, seemingly asleep, in this dream, believing that we're this other self, it, it seems like that this, um, this love is something unfamiliar. This love that Course in Miracles talks about is unfamiliar. So we want to become familiar with love, we want to become familiar with our truth and as soon as we turn to face that and we begin to question it and we begin to open up ourselves to that, we're very quickly taken within to the soul, taken within to um, Holy Spirit, to um, whatever, you know, they're all words but it's something that we can identify with early on in our journey and um, that's something that will 
either um, if we, we find something that we can identify with, that we can feel uh, this is something that um, uh, it still has a familiar ground. And um, with the word, the term soul, um, for me, that was something very helpful before I picked up A Course in Miracles. I would I was listening to Inner Guidance, uh, an, an Inner Guidance tape by Abraham Hicks, and it was, it was all about inner guidance, which I was very, very interested in because I knew there was this voice within, there was this other part of me that, you know, at the time I, I didn't, I've never read A Course in Miracles, I hadn't read anything about it, it was a personal, it was something in my life that took me within that I realized that, that this voice was something that I had been ignoring, that I hadn't been listening to, and there was something within me that knew the future, that knew everything that was going on, that, that there was something within me that had greater knowledge then, and I realized that, that that I had been referring to my limited brain. I'd been referring to my limited self at the time. I had a realization that there was a, a, another part of me, and and I knew that it was within because it was coming from within. It was like um, coming in the form of gut feeling guiding me, and and when I sat with it, I realized that there was these other answers that um, were surfacing that there's no way that in my brain, that in my thoughts, in my cap the capacity for what I was um, holding in information, I knew that, that there was no way that this information was stored there. And that happened um, in a natural way that I began to truly question what this other part of me was. I had not read anything about it. I had not um, studied it anywhere but it, it was something that happened in my life that I had come to realize that there was something within me, this, this gut feeling was the first um, understanding that came to me, that there was this, that there was this knowing, there was this um, greater knowledge within me, and, and I was very curious of where it was coming from, and, and what was this that I knew was not a part of what was in my head. <laughs> I knew it was coming from my, my gut area, my heart area was coming from within. And, um, you know, I, I would say that a lot of, you know, gut feelings is definitely a term I would have, would, would, would refer to, would be gut feeling. And I recall asking people, you know, was there any, any material, any books or anything on gut feelings? Because that's what I was calling it at the time. I'm like, you know, what is that? And I turned, to my, you know, at one point, you know, I was really questioning it and I was like really pondering what, you know, where is this coming from? What is this? You know, what is this other part of me? And I was led, you know, by this other part of me to do a breakdown of, 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 of who I see myself as. And I, you know, I was like, okay, well, you know, body, mind and soul, you know. Um, there's a spiritual part, there's a f physical part, you know, I was relating, you know, the mind more to the mental part at the time, and I would, you know, I was questioning that, and, and, and of course, you know, the answer within came up to me and said, spiritual, you know, do you know the spiritual part? And I'm like, hmm, that's not really something I've ever really sat and thought about or really ever pondered what the spiritual part is I've heard about the soul and it all sounds so beautiful but um, and prior to that I was very anti the spiritual word I was very anti anything spiritual I was not a spiritual person <laughs> at all um, not um, not not at all I anything any words that came from um, um, I was open, I guess, to the Bible, but but you know, and to um, to some of that, but but um, words like the Holy Spirit, even God, the word God was um, always very. I was always very fearful. It didn't. It never sat well with me. So opening up to the spiritual word, and when I sat with it at this time, I realized that the spiritual word was also something that could be related to my soul. And because the soul was always something that sat well with me, that that because you know, I'd always heard good, you know, the soul to me was just something, the heart of the soul, someone's soul is shining, you know, the sign there, the the soul is shining, and and what a beautiful soul that person is, you know, I heard all these um, statements growing up, and so it, that what that word had sat well with me, so when I 
chose to um, to really to, to, to take a look at this um, area. And I wanted to now, all of a sudden, I, I realized that this information that was coming to me was, I related it, but it was coming from a spiritual source within me. It was coming from my soul. And um, so I was looking for information. I was in Sydney, living in Sydney at the time, and there was really nothing. I, I wasn't sure what else to call it. Um, soon later, I became to call, um, to realize it was like an intuition. Well, I would um, see it as an intuition type of thing. And um, it was a while, maybe within the next 12 months, I was guided to actually move to California, <laughs> which is, <laughs> it seems like a long, <laughs> quite a long way to go, but it, it, I can, I look back at my journey and see how well fitted and, and how well planned by Holy Spirit you know, it, it really was and, and how beautiful. And so when I was in California, I had met this group of people and one of the girls had given me a tape um, that um, had, it was from Abraham Hicks and it was labeled Inner Guidance. And so that was kind of the beginning of my journey, truly, truly getting to know myself at that level, truly getting to understand who I am. And this inner guidance that Abraham Hicks always referred to as inner guidance, I came um, be, uh, came to know it as my, this is my soul. I'm turning to my soul, which really felt like I was turning to part of myself. Because I always felt that the soul was, you know, part of who we are. And so I felt like I was turning to my true self. So, uh, you know, looking at this sentence here today... <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to read that sentence again from the Course. Never forget that the sonship is your salvation. So the sonship is your soul. And so, you know, when we sit with that and, and I look look at my journey over all the years, because this now would be, gosh, 15, 17 years later than the time when I first recognized I had this other, this inner voice, this greater knowing within and so when I sit with this um, today and I, and I look at my journey and how my journey has unfolded, you know, we pick up A Course of Miracles, we can make so much of some of these spiritual paths and truly there's only one thing to do. <laughs> and that is to turn to this other part of us within, to turn to our soul um, within, to the spirit self to the Holy Spirit, whatever words we choose to use, because they're only words. We're just t we're turning to the, um, our true self that's been with us for a whole lifetime, that has always been fully awake, fully aware, uh, always, always um, uh, open with uh, knowledge. Knowledge is always flowing, and this self is truly part of who we are. So when we're turning to this self, we're turning to um, our truth. We're turning to the part of us that, that has every single answer, that knows everything, that knows how everything is unfolding. I remember that was kind of a catch for me, <laughs> was that the my soul, when I recognized my soul knew, my soul was guiding me to take um, actions or to follow a certain path, because I, I realized that my soul knew the outcome. My soul knew how this would unfold. And, um, you know, we, when we realize that this part of us, you know, the Course, the course of Miracles is pointing us, this whole book to me is one big fat pointer <laughs> pointing at our true self within and saying, go there, go there, go there, go there. This is where the answers lie. And whatever is in A Course in Miracles, whatever we're reading, whatever we're learning, our true, when we turn to our true self within, we know, we, we get, we understand everything completely in the moment because there's a knowing. There's a greater knowing that our, our true self has all of this in the bag. Our true self knows the unfolding, knows the perfect plan for salvation, knows knows this plan, you know, and, and so there's this truth, this other part of us that is our absolute truth. And as I got to know this part of myself over the years, became to um, I came to realize that this was truly my best friend was within, that, that this was um, 
you know, this part of me was guiding me in ways that I had never been guided before in my life because I had been listening to the other voice. I had been in my head the whole time. And and stepping away from that, getting out of my head, falling, dropping into the heart center, going, going within to the soul, really directly, like facing the soul. That's how it looks to me when I look at my journey. But that's how it looks to me is that I turned away from the self that thinks upstairs, <laughs> that's always in the, in the upstairs in the head, it's always thinking and pondering and judging and and um, planning <laughs> and um, really dropping out of that and really dropping out of that and, and, and turning away from that, really turning away from that and realizing that the truth isn't there. That's not where our truth is. That's not where the answers are. That's where the seeming answers are, but that's not where the answers are. The answers are all within our heart. So we get out of our head, we drop our attachment to um, thinking that we have all the answers, <laughs> to thinking we have it all figured out, and we, we, we drop all that and we turn to our soul, to our truth within, and as soon as we do that, as soon as we do that, we know in our hearts that we don't have it all figured out. We know instantaneously. There's an instant knowing. We stop, we turn, and we face our soul. We just stop and we turn to the truth within. We turn to our soul and we go, okay, show me. Show me the way. We know instantaneously that we have to drop everything out of our head. We can't go to both places. And there it shows the bridge. The bridge is within. The bridge home is within. We can't go to both places. We can't go to a head and be trying to figure it out and judging and, and planning and working things out. If we're there, we're holding the hand of our old self, of the confused self, the ego self, which is very confused. <laughs> we're either holding that hand and we're, we're there in our heads trying to figure things out or we drop that all together and we let go and we fall into our heart center. We turn to our soul and we face our soul. In our minds, we're going, we're facing our soul within and we're speaking, we begin a relationship. We have that um we develop that relationship and and the more we do that the stronger it gets the clearer the messages become the clearer the guidance and and the more that we realize that we go back into our heads and that that old way of thinking and, and deciding for ourselves we, we realize it's just all mumbo jumbo <laughs> and we realize that that was a confused state but that's not where any answers lie. There's no answers. There's pause. That's what that's what I see when we turn to our thinking and our planning and deciding we, we've got it all figured out up in the head. It's just like a pause. It's like a long pause because nothing's really happening. <laughs> there's no fruit there. There's no there's nothing to really take away from it. There's nothing that we are gaining from doing that. We are just in like a long pause of just like nothing is really going on. We're just, you know, the, the, that old saying, going around the hamster wheel. We're just, and we're chasing our tail. Nothing is really happening. We're not getting anywhere. Yeah, it might appear that we are to the ego mind, to the old self. It might appear that we're gaining something, that we're gaining some knowledge. But when we really see the difference and, and, we, and we turn to our true self, we, we, we turn to our soul and we listen to our soul and we listen to the spirit of our true self and we know that this is who we truly are and we turn to that, then, we, then what we're doing in that moment is we are disassociating with the old self. And the more that we do that, the more we disassociate with the old self, with the old thinking, planning habits up in the head, all this heavy thinking <laughs> that goes on. The more we disassociate with that, the less, the less pull it has to pull us back there. And the less sticky it is. We are not as attached to that. 
And, and really all that is is that we no longer have so much faith <laughs> in that. We've now placing our faith somewhere else in a greater knowledge. We're placing it within our hearts, within our true selves, to our soul, our spirit. We're placing it there and we're realizing from that place that, that this greater knowledge holds all answers, everything, all truth, all unfolding, all the plan for salvation, all of it, all the, all the answers that are going to take us to the place that we've searched for our entire life. And up in our heads is where we thought we were going to figure it all out and that we were going to find the happiness and the peace and the love. And we realize when we, when we turn to our soul, when we drop into our heart center, when we begin to truly listen to our true self from within, we realize that we were mistaken, that we've been mistaken for a lifetime. <laughs> that we've been mistaken believing that we had it all figured out in, in our head. And we come to realize that the truth of who we are is all that matters. There's nothing else that matters. And that doesn't take away from any brother or anyone that appears to be outside of us because the truth that we are is joined in oneness with everyone that appears to be outside of us. So whoever appears to be outside of us is us. <laughs> at a soul level, at a spiritual level, we are one. There is no separation. And when we are in this place of knowing, in this place of listening to this greater guidance that has all answers, all knowledge of God, all knowledge of salvation, all knowledge of the voice of God that's taking us there, all this, all this knowledge, is, we realize that this is, this is what we've been searching for our entire life. We've been searching for this because this is where now our hearts opening and opening and opening and we realize this is where the love is. This is the love that we've been searching for our entire life. And we come to realize that um, this is something very more recently on my journey that's been coming up a lot. Um, the question I, I get from spirit is, from my soul is, you know, like when it, if I turn to the outside world and, world and begin to make it real, uh, the message I get is, you know, you want to be friends with with this seeming ego identity that that, that you're making up. <laughs> is this who you want to be friends with? Because this is not what you're being looking for. This is the answer's not here. You know, and the message I've been getting is, you know, you you have a choice here. You want to be friends. We want to be friends with love, with truth, with our soul within, which is connected to all souls. We don't want to be friends there with this greater knowledge, all knowledge of God. Or if I'm going to forget about that and turn back to the outside world and make bodies real, people real, then the alternative is, you know, am I going to choose to, do I want to be friends with the ego? Because that's the choice. As soon as I turn to a body outside of myself and make that body real and befriending the ego, befriending the ego self that is really just a confused self that really knows nothing, <laughs> really doesn't have itself figured out as what it thinks it does, doesn't have anything figured out, is, um, is just plodding along, making the best of what it can possibly make of a, out of a whole lot of confusion. <laughs> And really nothing more than that. And so I've been guided recently is when I uh, step step back into the dream. And, and I find on this um, part of my journey that um, I go back and forward and, um, you know, I can walk out the door and all of a sudden something appears real. And then I'm making it real and making a conversation real, making the body real. So in that moment... I'm enforcing the separation, I'm believing in the ego, and as soon as I identify with um, having a nice conversation with someone, making somebody else happy, making myself feel happy within the conversation, then um, I'm befriending the ego. And, I, and I'm, in that moment, um, asking for my union, seeming union with the ego to be, to survive, and asking for that to be part of the plan and so I'm no longer 
listening to my guidance and no longer um, joined in oneness with my soul, with, with that guidance, no longer in oneness from my soul reaching out to other souls in, in that oneness, but now um, as soon as I make a body real, then I am befriending the ego and maintaining my attachment to the separation and allowing that to continue. And so when we look at this journey with the Course in Miracles or any non-dual path, it can initially it can appear that it's um, it could be complicated, can look complicated because we have this big book, <laughs> A Course in Miracles, or um, you know it can appear complicated even to some that choose a non-dual path of, of meditating to wake up to their true self and and many 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 years you, you know here are some that will sit for six seven ten years meditating um to wake up <laughs> and so you know we it, it sometimes it appears complicated when we get on this path but the the, the only complication in it is that the ego the ego mind has believed that it's had it figured out for a lifetime and all of a sudden it doesn't it, it, the ego mind is kind of thrown out of its um, comfort level and so the then the ego mind is wanting to grab what it can and, and it feels like it's losing itself so when we pick up this um, spiritual path of the course of the ego mind begins to feel that it's losing its grip that it's losing itself and of course it is that ego part of us that old self is beginning to lose its grip so it, it challenges and then it wants to to to, to um, grasp what it can to keep itself um, to keep itself going and alive you know that's just our old self you know and, and that's the confusion of our old self um, it, becoming even more confused <laughs> because it, it, at, at one point it had some level of control it had some level of identity and now all of a sudden all that's beginning to break away and it no longer knows itself like it did before and there's this break away so um, at the beginning of the journey I, I look back at my journey with the Course in Miracles and um, and realizing and you know I, I look at my journey along the way and realize that that it's truly truly a choice. There's just the one choice, and and we, and it's having faith in that one choice that we are going to listen to the other voice of love, and that we are making that choice that we no longer have it all figured out. That we become, we slowly become okay with that. It's a gentle persuasion. <laughs> A gentle awakening with the Course in Miracles, and there's a gentle persuasion to drop the old that we've known for a lifetime, to begin to let it fall away. And truly, that's all we're doing on the whole journey is turning. We're either facing love, facing the altar, facing our soul, Holy Spirit, Christ, whatever you want to say. We're either facing that way and we're interested in walking that way and we're interested in what you know we're, we're we're interested either that or we're interested in staying with the old self that we've known for a lifetime and over time it becomes very obvious as we sway backward and forward and backward and forward it becomes more and more obvious that that this old self is kind of a nutcase <laughs> so this old self is very confused that this old self doesn't have it all figured out that this old self is not the answer and that this old self is not the one that holds out the key to happiness in fact, this old self is the one that holds out the suffering, that beckons the suffering, 
without realizing it. We don't realize that from that place of old self. We are always struggling and trying and um, controlling and planning. And we, we think in all of that that we're, you know, we, we keep saying, we'll find it, we'll find it, we'll find it, we'll get there in the end. We're going to find the happiness. We'll get there. And then we find, we find that this old self was just we were living a lie that we were chasing our tail and then we realize that as we come to the realization that this old self really was just a pause anyway was a pause in life <laughs> it's just a pause because there's really nothing happening there's nothing going on there seems to be this old self chasing its tail. There seems to be this old self that is confused and yet there's this old self that there's just this pause because there's really nothing happening. There's really nothing of... Um, we, we, we realize there is nothing even to judge there. There is no um, old self that is bent or bad <laughs> or sinful or crazy we realize we, we look back and we realize that, that that's the first realization that from that place we appear to be that way that, that this is where it's coming from it's coming from that old self the confusion of the old self but we soon realize that that, that is that all seems what it is it seems to be that way and that the old self is truly nothing <laughs> it's truly not a identity at all and we come to realize that we're not who we thought we were <laughs> and we realize that that was just who we thought we were and we were only mistaken and as we realize that we were only mistaken and nothing more than that, nothing more than that, then we realize that any of the dream that's unfolding, that the seeming ego stuff that's coming up, we realize is just the unfolding and it's just the confusion unfolding. That's all it is. It's nothing more than that. There's nobody doing anything to anybody. Nobody's hurting anybody. No one is really attacking anybody. It's just the old self, the one self. There is the, the Holy Son of God. The one self was confused. So it's just the one self in a state of confusion. Just It was just sadly mistaken. Not even sadly mistaken. It was just mistaken. The old self was mistaken. And the old self was mistaken because it believed that it was a body. And it believed that there was other bodies out there. And it believed that... that there was separation from love and the belief that there were these objects and things that were separate from love and it was all in the mind it was all imagination it was all confusion it was just and we were just mistaken and nothing more than that and when we realize that we watch we watch the confusion of the one self, we can just watch it, knowing in the back of our minds, we know that it's confusion, we know that it's our self mistaken, and we know that the confusion is no longer sticky. <laughs> We're not. We, 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 we know we have the choice, moment to moment we have the choice. But the confusion is no longer drawn, we're not drawn to that old self, we're not drawn there anymore. The confusion becomes something very, you know, we, light-hearted. We can look on it and realize that we've been confused, we've been mistaken in believing that we're a body, we're believing that we can possibly be separate from love, and believing that any that there can be anything outside of ourself that we're not one with, we realize that that confusion is nothing more than confusion. 
And, you know, it's like a little child comes up to us and, and, and tells us a story and they were confused about something. It's like, you know, they were confused. We were a child of God that's been, you know, that was confused for a moment, that was mistaken for a moment, believing that we could be separate from love. And so what do we do then? We realize our mistake and we turn to love. <laughs> and we face the altar. We face the bridge going home. We put our foot on the bridge. We begin to walk on the bridge. We realize that this is our true self is on the bridge holding its hand out. It's our soul. It's the spirit self. Our soul is holding out the hand. And, and we know this is us. This is our true self. This is who we really are. And we look back the other way and we start, that's where we are. We're, we're on the bridge. And we, we, we start to look back and we see our mistaken identity. And, and, and we know in our hearts. It's nothing to be concerned about. It's nothing to um, to judge or to be concerned about. And we look back over the bridge and we see our confused self in all these many different forms and many different ideas and different beliefs of all these different bodies and things and objects. And we see that over the bridge. We see all this confusion, <laughs> mistaken identity. And we look the other way toward love. And we know we don't we don't see the thinking we don't we, there's just there's none of that we just know we know that what's up ahead what's on the other side of the bridge that walking over this bridge is a good thing and we know in our hearts that our soul has it has our back <laughs> and our soul our spirit has the answers has all knowledge all answers and we know in our hearts that we we this is our choice we turn to love. And that's all we need to do. We don't need to do anything else. We just need to step on the bridge. <laughs> In other words, be a little willingness. Come with a little willingness and open arms. And that's it. And we, we turn to love. And we don't do anything else. We just drop all of what all that old confusion. We look back the other way over the bridge. We see all the old confusion. And we just, we just realize that we've been confused. And we just drop it. And then we turn toward love and we, we allow ourselves to begin to remember. And that's all we're doing. With a little willingness and open arms, all we're doing is allowing ourselves to remember. We turn to our soul. We turn to the spirit within. We put our, we put our foot on the bridge. We, we, we stand on the bridge. We start to face toward home, toward love, and we're holding out the hand of our soul, of our true self. And we begin to melt. <laughs> the old self begins to melt away and we begin to realize that we are our soul. That we weren't the body. We realize that we are our soul. We are the spirit within. We are our truth within. We are our soul. And when we sit with that, we, we know in our hearts, we are our soul. We are our soul. You know, we, we, we know in our hearts we, there's no way we can be both. <laughs> we turn to our soul and we know in our hearts that all answers are provided. All knowledge is right here, right now. All truth is right here, right now. And we begin to realize that there is no long bridge <laughs> going home. There is no long journey going home. We begin to realize that it's all right here, right now. We are home. We're just confused and believing that we're not home, believing that we're separate. We realize we're standing on the bridge, holding the hand of our soul of Holy Spirit, holding the hand of the love of God. We're standing there holding it, and we realize that we are that. And we realize there is no journey home. <laughs> we realize that we are home. The journey is realizing that we don't have to go anywhere, that we don't have to do anything, that we don't have to attain knowledge. But the journey is realizing and remembering that we are the knowledge, we are that, and that we are our soul spirit already right here right now we are that right here right now we can drop everything else turn to our soul our spirit within turn to our true self that's our true self 
turn to our true self and really, truly, truly develop a very deep, beautiful relationship with our true self and we remember that that's who we are, that we're nothing other than that, that that's who we are. We are our true soul, our spirit within. And that's all we need to do. <laughs> that's a big pointer. The Course in Miracles is a big pointer, pointing at us to say, you have chosen the wrong friends. And now, choose again, choose love. Choose the friends within. Choose your truth. Choose your true, choose your true self within. And that's all the Course is telling us, is pointing us in that direction. Choose your true self. And we choose... When we do choose our true self and we're facing love, we're facing the altar, we're facing home, we are choosing our true self, then we, in that moment, we know everything there is to know. <laughs> when we truly, truly have chosen our true self, we know it's all here, right here, right now. We are the heaven. We are the knowledge of God. We are all of that right here, right now. There's nowhere else to go. There's nothing else to do. Except to develop that relationship with our true self, with our soul, with our spirit within. Developing that relationship is what the Course is talking about. It's what it's pointing us towards. It's asking us who, you know, it, it, it's letting us know who we have chosen for a lifetime as our friend. Who have we chosen? So we can have a look at that. Who are we referring to here throughout the day? Who are we believing that we are? And so it's pointing at that. Who have you chosen? And then the Course tells us, choose again. This time choose love. Same thing as saying, this time choose your soul. Choose the spirit within. Drop the body. <laughs> Forget about what what's in the head. Forget about all the thinking, all the trying and struggling and what's up in the head, all the planning, all this heavy thinking in the head. Of course, it's saying, forget about that. Lay that aside for now. And let's take a look at where knowledge truly is. Where is the truth? Where is the knowledge? And so the Course is, is asking us to take a look at the friends that we've chosen and, and what is our choice. It's free will. The Course tells us that we have free will. We've always had free will. And so we, we make that choice. Do we choose to befriend the ego? And we have numerous opportunities throughout the day to befriend the ego as the ego sees itself as separate from each other. <laughs> the ego has lots of opportunities to befriend itself and to continue believing in all of the confusion, just to stay confused and believing in separation. So, the, so throughout the day we have numerous opportunities to choose and to befriend the ego, or we have numerous opportunities to turn to our true self within, to our soul, and befriend the truth of who we are, to, to develop that relationship with our soul. And in doing that, we don't need anything else. When we've truly chosen our truth, when we've tr truly chosen our soul, when we're truly walking with our soul, and we've chosen that, then we, we close the books we put everything down, and now we've, we've, we're walking with the teacher of God. Now we're walking with the teacher of truth. Now we're walking with our true self. Now we're walking as our true self. I remember um, um, years ago when I was, um, this was before A Course in Miracles, when I'd spend time in meditation, I remember... Um, spending a lot of time in meditation getting to know this inner guidance this inner self and um, I recall at one point this uh, knowing inside of me that arose and I said to myself I choose to walk as my soul 
I knew nothing about A Course in Miracles. I didn't know anything about this. I didn't know at the time that about the dual world versus the non-dualistic world.